this and our latch is comprised of two NAND gates. I'm going to try to use my board space management good here because usually I write on bigger whiteboards, but we'll work with what we got. So, uh, all right. So we've got two NAND gates, and I'm going to draw up here basically the truth table for the NAND gate for all combinations of a two input NAND gate, A and B. All right, A, B, X. Okay, we've got four possible combinations for A, B in a base two system, binary system. Remember, NAND gate is the not AND gate, so its output is going to be opposite of the AND. So X will be 1, 1, 1, 0. All right, so S and R latch. Okay, now I know you may want to associate set reset with uh, one mode of operation or another, which is fine to do. However, I will show you how I do it. Uh, that way I feel it alleviates a little bit of confusion, makes it a little easier to work with. Alright, so basic S and R latch. Simple. Two NAND gates. Alright, I'm going to take the inputs, one of the inputs from each of the NAND gates. This is S, this is R. Alright, now I'm going to back feed the output from the NAND gates to each other. Just like that. This is the foundational setup here for the latch. All right. We're going to call this output Q, and this is primarily what we're going to talk about output Q. It has a byproduct Q0, or its complement, the complement of Q. I'm not going to discuss Q0 too much right now because I don't want to complicate things. I just kind of want to go over a basic SNR latch is going to work. Now what I like to keep in mind is uh, actually we have the truth table for the NAND gate. Uh, I'm going to give you the truth table for the SNR latch before we continue. That way we can compare as we go on. Now you know that if Q is 1, Q0 its complement should be 0 and vice versa. If Q is 0, Q0 should be 1. So, I'm going to give you the four possible combinations for S and R. Still going to be 0, 0 through 1, 1. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. All right. Now, 0, 0 is going to be what's called an invalid state. It's an invalid state on the latch because 0, 0 will give you matching outputs on Q, which negates having a Q and a Q not. So we're just going to call this one invalid, and I'm going to talk about the set operations and the reset operations on the SNR latch. All right, now, when you see this drawn, you may see it drawn with a line over the S and a line over the R. This is because it requires an active low, basically meaning a 0 to set the latch and a zero on R to reset the latch. So again, the line over it means that it's going to require an active low to either set or reset. But let's get those terms as far as set reset out and let's talk about it like this. All right, if I want a one on Q, I need to set a one. So to set a one on Q, that means that we need to put a zero on the set input or the S input. So if we do a 0, 1 combination on the S and R, we will set a 1 on Q for our data. All right, inverse of that, if I want to reset a 0 for my data Q, I will do a 0 or put a 0 on R because active low will trigger the reset function and a one on S. So reset a zero and set a one. This is what I want to stick. To set a one, zero, one, zero, one. To reset a zero, zero, one. Or one on S, zero on R. So again, we're only talking about the output on Q. Q 
naught is a byproduct. Again, if Q is 1, Q naught is 0. If Q is 0, Q naught is 1. Let's not complicate this table with that. We know what the complement of 1 or 0 is. So, we're just talking about Q. If I want to put data, a 1 on Q, a 0 on S. If I want a 0 on Q, a 0 on R, as outlined here in the table. So set a 1, reset a 0. All right. Now, here's where the memory comes in. This also, this uh, S and R latch has a latch state. And it's when we have a 1, in the, a one and a 1 on S and R. This is going to be our latched state. All right. So latch state, 1 and a 1. All right. Four states, 0, 0 is invalid. We're not going to work with that. We can set a 1, we can reset a 0 for Q, and we can latch the gate. All right, let's set a 1 on our SNR latch. To set a 1 on the SNR latch, again, 0 on S, 1 on R. It's active low, so this is the set function. When we get a 0 on one of the inputs, it's going to drive and only got two colors to work with. I'll see how good this red does. It's going to set a one right there. All right, this one is backfed into the second NAND gate, which means that we now will have a one and a one on the inputs here. This will drive Q not low. All right, so we have set a one. All right, so set a one. Now I want to latch it. I want to store it. So let's latch this one into place. Okay, the latch function, 1, 1. So, S gets a 1. Let's see what happens. All right. We've got this 0 backfed to this gate already from our previous condition. So merely changing this to 1 would give us a 0 and a 1 on this gate right here, which would still leave us with a 1 on the output. So it's not going to affect the output of this gate. <clears throat> the 1, again, will stay backfed to the second gate, so we'll have a 1 and a 1 here, giving us our 0. So, by changing S from 0 to 1, we have not done anything to our outputs. Our outputs stay latched in place. Nothing changes. So first thing we did is we set the 1, we did 0, 1 combination, got our 1, got our 0, then we latched it. So set a 1 and latch it. Latching it, we turn that S that was 0 to a 1, and it had no effect on any of the back feet or any of the outputs here on the S and R latch. So it is in a latch state. So let's do the opposite. Let's reset a 0. All right, to reset a zero, remember, zero is, or these inputs are active low, so to reset a zero, zero and one. Zero and one. R is zero, S is one. All right, let's see what happens. When we put a zero here, we drive this to one, kind of the opposite of the set function. Pushes a one up here, and on our output, we get a zero. That zero is going to back feed into here. And zero on zero will maintain our one. So we've got a zero on Q and a one on Q naught. So we have effectively reset a zero onto Q. All right, let's latch it. Same operation. This becomes a one. All right. When this becomes a 1, we still have a 0 latched to the other input. So a 0 and a 1 is still a 1 for our NAND, per our NAND gate properties. So we've had no effect on output here. This 1 is going to continue to be backfed to this NAND gate. With that 1 maintaining on the S input, we're still going to have a 0. So we reset a 0, and when we latched it, we saw no effective change on outputs or in the state of the SNR latch.